I have the floor. Me. I get to talk now. Hello. Sean, you ready? Okay, we're going. So we have clickers tonight, but we don't have an OTI guy. So our clickers are so much decoration until he shows up. He had car trouble, and I don't know where he is. He's not responding to my calls or texts, which is why you see me with the telephone. Um, obviously, we're going to have to talk to the company tomorrow and find out where our backup is if he doesn't show up. Because So we're going to go with the old-fashioned way of doing it. We're going to have voice votes, and five people can arise to challenge the moder. Hello, everyone should be quiet when I'm talking. I see you all up there talking. So if five people can arise to challenge my uh, ruling on a voice vote, they will, we will do a standing vote. So you new town meeting members are going to get to do something we haven't done for three years. The old town meeting members will give you an idea of how to do it. So. Tonight, we're going to have the Star Spangled Banner played by Eric Helmuth. All please rise. Nice rendition. Okay, we're going to put him in the rotation. All right. Are there any town meeting members who have not yet been sworn in? If so, please rise. Did you get sworn in yet? No, anybody who hasn't been sworn in, newly elected or old town meetings who are re-elected. If you're a repeat from last year, you're all set. Okay. Oh, we got one in the back. Okay. Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I will participate fully and fairly. Will evaluate all matters before the town meeting and vote in the best interests of the town. I support free speech and will treat others with mutual respect and will conduct myself in a civil manner. <laughs> will conduct myself in a civil manner <coughs> that is becoming of an elected town meeting member. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the Town of Arlington, in accordance with the bylaws, the Town Manager Act, and the general laws of the Commonwealth, so help me God. <laughs> um, I already told you about the OTI guy, so now I recognize the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Ms. Mahan.
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is requested that the members of the Board of Selectmen and elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads of the town and staff, superintendent of schools and staff, committees, commissions, boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and superintendent, members of the general court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted on by this meeting, representatives of interested parties of Article 1, and representatives of the news media be permitted to sit within the special town meeting enclosure. Second. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Okay. They can so do that. So wait and see read that again as we're right into the special town meeting now. So we're going to deal with the special first. So I have to go through my stuff too. Um, Madam Clerk, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by the Board of Selectmen and that the constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws? She signifies yes, she does. Uh, Ms. Mahan? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting is set forth in the warrant for the special town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, May 2nd, 2016 at 8 p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so moved. Mr. Costey. No, I, I was going to say that Oh, well, we. Wait. Oh. I just want to. Do you want me to amend that? Yeah, man, amend that. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. No, okay. I didn't catch it either when we did the um, agenda. Okay, the two guys didn't catch it, neither did I. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to make a, an amendment to um, if the. Business of the meeting is set forth in the warrant for the special town meeting is not disposed of this session that when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Monday, May 9th, 2016 at 8 p.m. Okay. All in favor? Aye. So moved, May 9th. Okay, any announcements or resolutions? Mr. Corso. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Steve DeCourcy, Precinct 2. Just want to announce that it, tonight the uh, Arlington High School girls tennis team, uh, they're waving to us now, is, is here tonight uh, for baked goods. They had a match this afternoon, and they're here tonight, and um, they've been working very hard, and as one of the smaller varsity sports programs at the high school, I know they'd like nothing more than to sell out of all their baked goods tonight. So that includes everybody in the hall. Let's see if we can support the team tonight. Mr. Marr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator uh, John Marr, Precinct 14. Uh, just indulge me on a personal note. Uh, the moderator mentioned the other night, this is the 79th annual town meeting. Uh, I've been at more than half of those meetings. Uh, pretty scary. Uh, <laughs> they, in any event, uh, I, I rise, uh, as I do each year, to uh, put the town meeting uh, on notice, uh, members and anybody else watching, uh, that uh, the Sims uh, nonprofit uh, medical use uh, committee uh, has approximately uh, just short of a million dollars, which uh, we uh, consider a request for proposals each year for medical uses in the community. We average about forty or fifty thousand dollars each year for grants. Uh, those grant uh, requests for proposal are being advertised in the Advocate. And if anybody has any interest in uh, applying for them, uh, please see me at the break or at any time. I can give you a lot much more details. I don't want to detain the uh, town meeting any further. Thank you. Thank you. Sir? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. My name is Michael Jacoby Brown, Precinct 17. This is about early voting. Uh, I hate to get so personal so fast, but let me first ask you, how many of you rode your horse for a day to vote on election day in November? Okay, uh, I thought so, not too many. Uh, Tuesday has been election day in our country since George Washington's time so that white male voters who own property could go to church on Sunday ride their horse all day on Monday, vote on Tuesday, and get back, on ho get back home in time for market day on Wednesday. Well, for most of us, times have changed a little, and now Massachusetts 
is finally catching up to 33 other states that will allow all citizens to vote in our state on 11 days and some evenings before Election Day in November. This early voting will only be for the biennial November elections, so town elections remain as they have been. This also, this new law also provides for internet voter registration and pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds, although they'll have to wait until they're 18 to actually vote. So if you know or anyone who has, if you know of anyone who has trouble voting only on Tuesday, November 8th, please let them know that starting this year, they'll be able to vote early, if not often, at two locations here in, I'm serious, no, you can only vote once. Uh, sorry, uh, this doesn't allow for multiple votings by yourself. Of course, you still can ride your horse to the polls like George Washington did, but if you do that in Arlington, you will have to clean up after your horse. Uh, I think Arlington, I'm not sure, I don't know if Chief Ryan's here, uh, still has a pooper scooper law for horses as well as for dogs. And if you have any other suggestions or questions about early voting, my name again is Michael Jacoby Brown. I'm in Precinct 17 and I'm sitting over there. I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator, and all of you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Any other announcements? Hi, everyone. My name is Marilee Guerra, and I'm co-chair of the Arlington Cultural Council. And this is actually our first time presenting here at town meeting, so thank you. But we just wanted to take a moment to go over that there are a couple of different organizations here in Arlington now that support the arts, and their acronyms can get a little confusing. So we have the ACA, which is the Arlington Center for the Arts, and they do have a physical space here in Arlington and have programming throughout the year. There's the ACAC, which is the Commission on Arts and Culture, and you may have heard them recently. They're actually the ones that are um, moving forward with the project to make Arlington a cultural district. And then we are the ACC. So we're the Arlington Cultural Council, and we are a part of the Massachusetts Cultural Council. And what our mission entails is to take the funds that are given to us and give them out throughout the year. And basically, we wanted to let you know that we have a lot of really wonderful activities happening in 2016. We were able to give out 17 grants, totaling $12,200 for this year. And they went to the Opal Ensemble, the Arlington All Town Brass Band, Music to Cure MS, Creek River String Band, Old Schwab Mill, Powers Music School, Arlington Public Art, Arlington Center for the Arts, the ACA, Arlington Historical Society, the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum, Belmont World Film, Dance Caliente, Tap and Blues, Robbins Library, Pamela Powell, and the Marble Collection. So all in all, we're very proud of these events. We look forward to seeing them throughout the year, and we look forward to seeing you there. So if you go to arlingtonculturalcouncil.wordpress.com, we hope to see you. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Any other announcements? Seeing none. Um, any reports of committees? Mr. Bunnell. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening, Andrew Bunnell, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. I wanted to thank everyone for their votes on 6 and 7. Uh, Monday night, uh, I also felt it necessary to explain to town meeting briefly why the Arlington Redevelopment Board voted to uh, change our recommended votes. Uh, you all should have received a letter authored by me. Hopefully you will take the time to read that. Uh, but it became clear throughout the public process of these Warren articles proposed uh, that there was a great deal of confusion, a uh, great deal of consternation about the articles being put forward, uh, and a lack of consensus about the way to move forward here on residential zoning articles. So with that in mind, uh, I asked the board at our earliest possible date to reconsider those votes, and having had that discussion, the vote was changed, uh, recommended vote was changed on our articles 8, 9, and 10 to no action. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bernal. Do you have a report of a committee, Mr. Leonard?
Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. More so a bit of housekeeping, if I could, on the committees. Um, seeing as how we received the report from the uh, Community Preservation Committee, which will be discussed later on, uh, would it be appropriate to eliminate the Community Preservation Act Study Committee on the committees, or reports of committees now? Seeing as how so that committee so you probably want to make has now been dissolve changed. Community Preservation Act Study Committee. Okay. A second. All in favor of dissolving that committee, please say yes. yes. It is so dissolved. Second of all, Mr. Moderator, I wonder if we'll be receiving any kind of report from the Building Maintenance Committee. Anybody on that committee? Mr. Chaplin, do you know if that's an exam co committee? Adam Chaplin, town manager. I'm, I'm not clear if the building maintenance committee as listed in the committees of town meeting was the building maintenance committee that last year recommended the establishment of a facilities department or if that's a, a different prior establishment of a committee. But to answer the question directly, uh, there's no expected report of a building maintenance committee. The reason I bring the idea up, Mr. Moderator, is I have seen online reports from the Building Maintenance Committee, but they have stopped as of July 2014. And I was just curious if they plan to continue having meetings and putting their minutes on the website. We'll find out for you and report back. Thank you. Lastly, Mr. Moderator, I wonder for the fifth year in a row, if we could address the fact that the maintenance study committee is still being listed under reports of committees, and I for a fact know that the committee has not met in 13 years. We have a motion to dissolve the maintenance study committee. This is the third year you've tried to dissolve it, Mr. Moderator, and the fifth year I brought it to your attention. Let's dissolve it one more time, see if it sticks. Maybe three times a charm. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Maybe three. All in favor? Aye. Okay, maybe it'll stick this year. Any other reports of committees? Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Seeing none, we now turn to Article 1 of the special town meeting. The special town meeting is on page 21, recommend uh, page 21 of the finance committee report. We have a recommended vote of the finance committee of no action on article one of the special town meeting. All in favor of no action, please say yes. 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 All opposed? It's a unanimous vote and I so declare. Yes, sir. What's your point of order? Uh, we received their general report the other day, which included all the votes for the special. So I think we can assume that we officially received it. Yes, sir? We can do it again if you want. Um, Article 2. Mr. Tosti? Do you want to introduce Article 2 or do you have nothing? We have the recommended vote transfer $200,000 to the Special Education Stability Fund. Does anyone wish to speak to that article? Seeing none, all in favor of the recommended vote of the Finance Committee, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? It's a unanimous vote and I so declare it. That closes Article 2 and opens Article 3. We now have Article 3 before us. Recommend a vote of the Finance Committee. They are going to report at this time. Um, first of all, just to update the status, uh, as I mentioned Monday, the, uh, there will be a complete public hearing on the report of the consultants on the middle school options uh, that will be here uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock 
Uh, the consultant will present their findings uh, and that will be open for any public comment. Uh, the committee would, uh, the task force would appreciate getting that. Uh, then on uh, Monday uh, at 7 o'clock in the Lions hearing room, uh, the task force will meet to discuss and make a vote. Uh, Finance Committee will probably meet on, on Thursday uh, to make a recommendation and uh, we'll have that on your seats by the following Monday the 9th. So therefore, I move to postpone this uh, to May 11th or earlier at the call of the moderator. We have a second on that motion. All in favor, please say yes. yes. Opposed? It is so postponed by unanimous vote. That puts aside Article 3 for now and brings us to Article 4. Uh, we have recommended vote of the Stratton School renovation of no action by the Finance Committee. All in favor of no action, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? It's a unanimous vote of no action. I so declare it. That closes Article 4 and brings us to Article 5. Mr. Tosti. Okay, this is the first step uh, of the, uh, to go through the Mass School Building Authority uh, for a renovation or rebuild of Arlington High School. Uh, uh, Mr. Chapelaine will, will go through this process in more detail and the superintendent here is to answer any questions, uh, but, but this will be the first step. Um, if you pass this tonight, um, and this is contingent upon a vote of the people for debt exclusion from Prop 2 and a half, uh, which I believe will be on Tuesday, June 14th, so you can all get your horses here on time. Uh, if it passes uh, here and at the referendum, uh, then we'll proceed through the process, which will probably take several years. Uh, but Mr. Chapelain will go into that in a little bit more detail. Thank you. Mr. Chapelain? What did you want the um, superintendent to speak first? Why don't, why don't you go? Hey, you go first. Dr. Bodie? <laughs> Kathleen Bodie, superintendent of schools. Um, uh, Mr. Chapelain and I are both going to t uh, speak to this motion. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief overview and then he's going to, to um, explain what the process is going forward. Um, I'm actually very pleased uh, tonight to be here in person to tell you that in January the MSBA, Massachusetts School uh, Building Authority Board, invited Arlington High School into the eligibility module of the process to begin a partnership with MSBA for the renovation or rebuild of the high school. Later in May, at the next board meeting, the, the board will vote to commence the work required to begin the work in this phase. A year ago, April, we submitted for the second year in a row an application to the MSBA called a Statement of Interest outlining the reasons why Arlington High School was in need of renovation or rebuild. In 2013, the school was placed on warning status for accreditation by the New England Association for Schools and Colleges for the poor condition of the facilities, which limits teachers' ability to implement curriculum, for insufficient size and design of science labs, for insufficient number and size and layout of classrooms, and the ability of the building to, to support a full range of technology. Many of the systems of the school are at or beyond their expected life service and are in need of replacement or repair. And there's a need for improved building security. So the scope of need was clearly very compelling to, the Mass to MSBA, which is why we are here tonight. And uh, Mr. Chapelain will walk us through what the next steps are. Thank you, Dr. Bodie. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Chapdelain, Town Manager. Good evening. Uh, so as Dr. Bode just mentioned, I'm going to briefly walk through the actual MSBA process that we're asking town meeting uh, to vote on tonight uh, and what, what your vote, uh, potential vote tonight will get us through. Uh, so what you see behind me is the actual uh, MSBA process, which is broken out into eight modules. So you can see we have the eligibility period, which we are currently in, move forward to actually putting together the project team, conducting a feasibility study, performing schematic design, 
then putting to getting, uh, together funding for the actual construction of the project, moving into the detailed design or architecture for the project, going into construction, and then completing or closing out the project. But for, for the purposes of tonight, uh, the vote before you will actually set us up to move through modules one through four. So through this eligibility period into schematic design. So I'll briefly walk through modules one through four so it's very clear what town, uh, town meeting is being asked to do tonight. So module one. Uh, module one sets forth the eligibility period and lays out seven steps that the town needs to take or um, milestones the town uh, needs to achieve within a 270 day period. Uh, so I believe our 270 day clock will begin on May 25th when we expect the MSBA to actually uh, put in writing our invitation into the process. And then, uh, and then after that, we have to, uh, as you see, certify the district's understanding of the actual grant program. We have to put together the school building committee, which the MSBA specifies the makeup of that committee and then have it approved by the MSBA. We have to complete an educational profile questionnaire, which details the current uh, operation and methodology of the district. We have to summarize our existing maintenance practices. Not working. We have to certify a design enrollment and then have that approved by the MSBA. Uh, we then have to confirm community authorization and funding to proceed. And that's actually very specifically what town meeting is being asked to do tonight uh, with a favorable vote uh, on this article. And then we can execute the MSBA's actual feasibility study agreement, which puts forth our uh, reimbursement process and our reimbursement percentage. Uh, and quick point on this, we will get a reimbursement percentage figure that you will hear uh, but then you will also hear talk about eligible expenses. And what that will create is a reimbursement percentage and then an effective reimbursement rate. And that's the reimbursement percentage being laid on top of what is actually eligible for MSBA reimbursement through the process. So for example, during the Thompson School reconstruction, our reimbursement rate was 50.42%, but our effective reimbursement rate was closer to 47 or 48% based on what was eligible and what was not. So moving out of uh, module one, once we ac accomplish those tasks, we move into two, which is forming the project team. And that's actually pretty straightforward. Following the MSBA's uh, standards and protocols, we will go out to bid and hire an owner's project manager or an OPM. Once they're on board, they will help us go through a designer selection process to hire an architect. And then once they are both on board and approved uh, by the MSBA, we move into module three, which is the feasibility study. So we have them on board, uh, and then working together with the MSBA, the OPM, and the designer, we'll document the existing educational program, generate an initial space summary, we'll look at existing conditions, establish the design parameters, and then we'll develop and evaluate the alternatives. And that's a key point. Uh, going through this feasibility study forces the town to look at multiple options for what the best project is for Arlington High School, whether it be a complete reconstruction, a renovation, uh, a combination of the, uh, both, potentially even an alternate site, though I'm not sure where that site would be in Arlington. Um, and, 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 and we, uh, no, I didn't say that. Uh, and and we, uh, we, we look at those alternatives, and then what we do is recommend the most cost-effective and educationally appropriate preferred solution to the MSBA for their consideration. Once they approve that, we can move into schematic design. And that takes us to uh, a more detailed uh, design that we can actually put together the scope and budget and schedule for the project. It allows the MSBA to put together a project scope and budget agreement that we can consider and sign off on once their board of directors has approved it. And once that's laid out, it will allow us to come back to you and the town with a project and actually request a project funding agreement and real funding for the actual construction of the project. Uh, so those are the basics of modules one through four and what we're asking for you to do tonight. Again, this is an appropriation to get us through schematic design, uh, and the appropriation itself is contingent upon the successful passage of a debt exclusion uh, that's currently scheduled for June 14th. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak to this article? Ah, Mr. Jamison. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. I have two very quick questions. Um, how does the Permanent Town Building Committee interface with this process? And the second question is, um, we have lots of talk about capacity studies uh, and the need for more space in all these projects we're going to be talking about over the next uh, week. 
And I want to make sure that in that discussion, we're um, take, taking into consideration our, our needs for participation in the lab school um, consortium. Uh, Mr. Chaplain, can you answer those questions? Madam Chaplain, Town Manager, the Permanent Town Building Committee will have representation on the School Building Committee, similar to what they had on the Thompson School Building Committee. And on the, the, the second question, I, uh, I'll let the superintendent uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but all such uh, enrollment uh, questions will have to be considered through this feasibility study process to hit in on that actual design enrollment number that both the district will agree to and the MSBA will agree to. I, I asked that second question. I happened to uh, have a discussion with some uh, women in Lexington and they were discussing that a, a, large, a, a, a large segment of the lab school high school population, which they try to put in um, corresponding grade levels, is at Lexington High. And, and this, as the audience may or may not know, um, that population doesn't graduate in a four-year time period like mm -hmm. most high schools. They're eligible for care up, to, I believe, till age 23. So you tend to accumulate, and they also have space problems at their high school. So I just want to make sure that's taken into consideration. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to speak to this article? Seeing none. So this is a bonding issue. It has to be a two-thirds vote. First, we'll try a voice vote. All in favor of this article, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? It's a unanimous vote, and I so declare it. That closes Article 5, brings us to Article 6. Mr. Tosti. Uh, just a little background on, on what's happening with this. Uh, yesterday morning, uh, the uh, Selectman's Task Force and uh, Study the Minuteman Project uh, met, uh, had a full discussion of, uh, of the issues, and um, that task force consisted of uh, two members of the Board of Selectmen, uh, two members from the Finance Committee, two members from the uh, School Committee, uh, Town Manager, uh, oh, and, and uh, several other town officials. And uh, after a discussion, they voted eight to one to recommend favorable action on the Minuteman project uh, with uh, a, a vote contingent. In other words, uh, to pass it contingent upon a Prop 2 and a half override. Uh, last night, the Finance Committee met uh, and what shall I uh, diplomatically say, had a full and frank discussion of the issues uh, and voted 10 to 8 uh, to recommend uh, that we proceed with the building project consent contingent upon a Prop 2.5 uh, debt exclusion. This is a, uh, this is a tough issue. Uh, there's valid arguments on, on both sides. So uh, we'll try to get as much material out to you. I think you've probably gotten some uh, from the uh, uh, Minuteman already, and I'm sure there'll be much more. Uh, so uh, I move that uh, this article be postponed until May 9th. Second, and that's the same date Dr. Bokun is coming for everything else. So all in favor of postponing to 5-9, please say yes. 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 Opposed? It is so postponed. That this. I move that the special town meeting be adjourned. All in favor of adjourning the special town meeting, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? It is so adjourned. That brings us back to the regular town meeting. And we go right into Article 11. We have a recommended vote of the ARB of no action. Mr. Oster. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Adam Oster, Precinct 3. Um, I have a substitute motion under this article, which uh, I put on your chairs on Monday night, uh, and I hope I won't uh, incur your wrath too much when I ask to postpone this until after Article 10. That was the original intent, and I really think that consideration of this will um, go better and make more sense and not involve a lot of head scratching if it occurs after there's been some discussion uh, of some of these issues about new construction and um, lot size and all of that stuff. Um, so that's my motion. Second. Second. We have a motion to postpone. It's been second. Does anybody wish to address postponement? No. All in favor of postponing, please say yes. 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 Opposed? 
It is postponed till after we dispose of Article 10, whenever that may be. Right now it's scheduled for the 4th. That brings us Article 12 and 13, we're disposed of on the consent agenda. It brings us to Article 14. We have recommended vote of oh, action, Mr. Belskis. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Belskis, Precinct 18. Uh, I rise to present a substitute motion to Article 14. The substitute was placed on your seats last week uh, at the rear of the hall, copies provided to the moderator. Uh, the seat copies were in a package beginning with the Article 8 amendment, in case you missed it. This motion makes a modest change in the side yard setback for homes in the one and two family zoning districts. Currently, the minimum side yard setback is 10 feet. The proposed change is to keep the same minimum, but also require that the sum of the two side yards be at least 25 feet. Uh, please make careful note that the language in the substitute motion is quite different than what you saw in the warrant. The side yard setbacks are measured to your property line. Independent of where a house is located in your neighbor's lot. The basis for this motion is a response to the redevelopment board's dissatisfaction with the original article's 30 foot setback distance to a neighboring home, which may have resulted in the no action <coughs> vote that the re redevelopment board put forth. Early this year, I joined with a number of interested citizens uh, meeting with the objective of reviewing what would be the redevelopment board's implementation plan for the adopted master plan. During the many master plan hearings conducted in the Arlington neighborhoods, there was a consensus that the character and curb appeal of units in the RO, R1, and R2 zones should be preserved as it reflects the type of housing that brought people to own and reside in Arlington. The citizen group had a level of expertise well suited for zoning issues. Mr. Loretti was a past member of the redevelopment board, was a governor's appointee. Mr. John Warden is an attorney who for many years was the meeting's moderator. He's also on the, uh, the lawyer's uh, real estate board. Uh, Dr. Patricia Warden, for many years, a member of our housing authority, Elizabeth Pyle, a newly elected town meeting member is an attorney with widely recognized uh, experience in zoning articles uh, and land use issues. And Winnell Evans and Paul Parisi are citizens activists supporting a, local, a number of local issues. And I, as many of you know, am a 16-year member of town meeting, noted as the activist that compiled, compiled Arlington's 40B safe harbor calculations and I'm also known at the state, statewide as a housing activist. I'm a regular participant in related hearings before the legislature, Department of Housing and Community Development, submitting testimony and filing bills. We were focused on the impact of a very active development trend that appeared to focus on unusually large homes replacing existing units. There was a sense that our current zoning laws had left too many opportunities for construction adversely affecting abutters and neighborhood characters, and we evolved a number of articles addressing this concern. A particular problem this motion aims to address is homes with walls up to 35 feet tall being built just 20 feet apart or even closer than your home if your side yard is less than 10 feet. As a longtime town meeting member, I know how difficult these zoning articles are, and in most instances, we come to final decisions that are in the best interest of the majority of our constituents in the town. We substituted this motion as a result of hearings with the redevelopment board seeking consensus as to the positions between their articles and ours. Uh, those offered by our group uh, were heard in a cooperative atmosphere, but they did not endure and our artic articles were designated no action. But we did retain a few of the articles with amendments to bring them before town meeting. And I have some slides that I'd like to bring forth. Uh, this kind of demonstrates what we're talking about. First off, the first slide shows you shadow lines that occur 
Okay, that's all right. Uh, with that kind of separation, the top one being the 20 foot separation, and what we were asking for was the 30. That's changed a little, but the significance is basically the same. Next slide. This is what the setbacks would look like under our proposal. Currently 1010 proposed, we allow you 12 and a half on each side, or you can actually restructure it so you can have 10 on one side, 15 on the other. This makes it very flexible and adjustable, and it kind of responded to what the developers told us at some hearings that uh, you have 30 was a seconds sir. to them. You have 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, this is something that was worked on very diligently by a group of people. I wish I had more time to go further on it. It's something we need. It doesn't change anything very significantly. It's very minor, and I'm sure you will find it to the advantage of citizens in this town that need this kind of flexibility. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jamison. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, so I, um, this is a preface. I really wished we had that the proponents of these articles who are all in um, working with Mr. Warden, who we kindly let postpone his articles till next Wednesday, I wish the proponents of this article and the next two um, had seen fit to move them to next Tuesday so we could have done them all in conjunction, and I hope that for the next two articles they will see fit to do that. We were polite to them. It would be nice to have the meeting have a consensus and to only zoning like next Wednesday. But let's push forward on this one. Um, I, I want to speak to this article from just the perspective of the half block that I live in in Arlington Heights. Uh, many of the lots, um, unlike the one in uh, the information that was provided both here and um, we have the slide back up, please. Um, suggest that um, yes, uh, I, I know that the um, at least in my area of town, the minimal new building lot is 60 feet and 100 feet, so 6,000 square feet, 60 feet frontage and 6,000. But many of you may or may not be aware that many houses in Arlington were built on smaller lots with 40 foot frontages and 4,000 square feet, including many in my little half block of about 16 houses. So as it stands now, I don't know how it rules on the 40, but uh, so I have a 60 foot lot and uh, uh, my house actually for full disclosure was in the middle of was in the middle lot of three 4,000 square foot lots and was moved over a small addition that made to mine and yes a larger house was built next door um, but the 4,000 foot lots that that are scattered throughout that my street are not buildable which is fine um, but there are the house across the street that a couple um, with their two children just moved into they're very happy to be, to be returning to Arlington because he's an Arlington native um, is on a 4,000 foot lot so if they decided they wanted to tear that house down and build a, a conforming house to that lot this would mean that 25 feet if I have it right of the 40 feet would be non buildable and even for, even for a lot of 60 feet you're increasing by five feet, 25%, um, the amount of the house that's, that's non-buildable. So um, I understand the, the concept. Uh, it's great if you have a large lot to make this argument, but a lot of the houses that um, people are moving into, um, even the houses we discussed the other, e the other evening where um, they would have to have a special permit to take a, um, a cape up one floor uh, those houses are built on small lots. Go, go into some places the uh, um, other side. I live by Robbins Farm Park, but go on the other side of town in the Heights, and there's a whole bunch of houses that are on these teeny lots. And so um, if someone decides that that house is, I mean, there, there are situations where houses are just not worth renovating, and you have to start over on that footprint. 
And if starting over in that footprint means you lose an, a, a large percentage of your buildable area, what you end up with is shotguns, and those won't look good either. So um, I urge a vote against this article. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Burnell? Hey, 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 hey. No, we don't do that. Mr. Burnell? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Andrew Burnell, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, the Redevelopment Board has not had the opportunity to discuss this article, uh, this substitute motion, rather, in its current form, and therefore we no have no opinion. Uh, I do want to echo the sentiments just offered by Mr. Jameson, though, and I would also like to reiterate that uh, the Board is concerned with development in town, uh, positives and negatives, and uh, again, the reason that we've changed our vote is to uh, allow for more time to study and research possible zoning and other changes to keep Arlington uh, property values what they are, to keep Arlington desirable uh, and livable, uh, and keep it open and welcoming to anyone that may want to move here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Gentleman over here on the right. First guy to raise his hand. Yeah. He beat you. You're next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Gregor Gregory Christiana, Precinct 15. Um, so I tried to get information about the impact of this across the town because uh, um, my house would be non-conformant according to these new, uh, this proposed bylaw change, and this isn't even why I ran for town meeting. Um, and I'm wondering, and my neighbor's house would also be non-conformant. I haven't actually counted up all the houses in town that would be non-conformant. Based on that sample, it's like 100%, right? So. Um, and, the prob and the problem is that's the best data that I have, and I've actually tried to get better information. I've asked one of the members of, of the citizen group who contacted me over email directly, um, and she was unable, unable to answer like, what that percentage of houses or buildings in town would be that would be now non-compliant, that weren't, were not previously. For me in particular, I could tell you just a little bit about my house. Um, my wife and I moved here with our two young kids, knowing that this house was relatively small, especially the, the kitchen. And on one side, I won't get into too much detail to bore you, but on one side, uh, we're like right at that, uh, that 10 foot minimum setback. Uh, our kitchen is on the other side where we have, uh, uh, let's see, we have about uh, 13 feet. And really all we would need to make our kitchen big enough is a couple of feet of bumping out our kitchen. And that's all our plan. And you know, we wouldn't be so, totally heartbroken if we couldn't do that, but I'm wondering how many homes in town would be in that same predicament. Uh, they had a certain expectation when they moved to town. They don't have big plans to build a McMansion. We're just trying to bump out a little bit this house that was built in the 1950s, and it's a modest-sized house, and it would continue to be a modest-sized house. So, um, so I, I asked this member of the citizen group, and she was unable to give me uh, any sort of figure on this, even an estimate uh, I was unable to get. I asked on the Arlington list, on the email list, uh, when this discussion came up, and I still was not able to get a specific answer on that, even just a guesstimate I was unable to get. Um, and at our precinct meeting, um, I asked there, there were representatives of the citizen group there as well, and I was unable to get a specific answer on that. So um, I, 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 while I like the idea of it, and it, it, it's unfortunate for me that my house would kind of be one of the casualties of this, I'd be willing to go along with this if we actually had better information about it, better than my 100% sample of two houses. Uh, so if someone has more information on this, uh, I mean, it, it is discernible in theory from GIS information in town, and I would hope that someone who is a strong proponent of this, um, who I might be if I actually had the data uh, or had the time or priority to, to look into this, but uh, I just have other priorities right now. Uh, but if someone is able to present that, they could sway my vote, but right now I'd have to urge just based on the lack of evidence uh, to, um, uh, to reject this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, sir. Gentleman in the black sweater. <coughs> Daniel Ruiz, Precinct 16. Uh, I'm against this. Uh, my concern, while I understand the intent uh, of it, is uh, to try to retain the 
uh, character of our town. The concern that I have, in addition to the one where there are uh, lots that uh, may not be conforming uh, for any renovation, uh, my concern is more uh, related to the fact that there's this uneven uh, uh, dimensional quality that's part of the article. Uh, specifically, it, my concern is that it will lead to an arms race between neighbors who can get to the 10-foot line first. <laughs> so I plan to vote against it for that reason. Thank you. There's a gentleman in the way back. Yes, you, sir. I'll put you on the list. Good evening, uh, <clears throat> Mark Lombard, Precinct 13. I have some uh, PowerPoint aids here. I thought, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So I'd, I thought I'd try to boil this down for everybody and see what we're looking at here. So I stand in opposition of this article, right? I'm a lifelong, re excuse me, lifelong Arlington resident, father of three. I bought this house in 2002, maybe. Um, Next slide, please. And did a renovation in 2013, okay? Um, I think we all can agree that the second house is a lot nicer than the first house, okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, you wanna to talk to my builder then, too. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't agree to that, but my position is that it is, right? We need to invest in our real estate in this town, okay? If I take my specific house as an example, next slide, please. This is Article 14, right? That addition that's circled there, master bedroom in this case, would not be allowed, okay? Uh, because of the 30 foot setback, um, adjo 30 feet to the adjoining dwelling, okay? And there's no allowance for special permit. Sir. It's 25 is the proposal now. Okay, well, t it wouldn't fit within 25 either. Um, it's 15 and 10 or 25. So go ahead. Well, what he's, he let him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is how I interpreted the article. Um, if it's 25, it still, would, it still would fit within the 30 foot um, that I think. We understand that. The gentleman has the floor. Yeah, yeah, I understand. 25 is fine, okay? But this still wouldn't fit. So I think this proposal, proposed zoning bylaw does not fit in the town of Arlington. Why would we not be able to invest in our homes that I bought 12 years ago with the anticipation of making a renovation so I could stay in this town, okay? I think this is a very clear and concise example of why this article does not fit. I strongly urge you to vote against this zoning bylaw. Thank you. Mr. Cacavaro. Thomas Cacavaro, Precinct 11. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to ask the body if I can invite a homeowner from Arlington to speak on Article 14. His name is Don Westwater. Town residents have a right to speak. Mr. Westwater can come forward. He's over here to your left. Yeah, hi, my name is Don Westwater, and uh, uh, my property is 122 Thorndike Street, and um, my mother-in-law, who's a lifelong resident of Arlington, uh, her husband died about a year and a half ago, and my wife and I intend to move into her basement when my uh, junior in high school graduates. Um, I just found out that in order to expand the basement, which is just above ground, that we will not be able to do that. Um, and I understand that you have a letter that I wrote 
on your, on your uh, seats. <clears throat> so um, this is a concern to us because my mother-in-law needs uh, care pretty much 24-7. Um, and we'd like to be able to move into the house and not be intrusive since it's her house and she's lived there for 50 years. Um, so we'd like to keep ourselves in the basement yet be available to her when she needs us. Um, and we just discovered that the 35-foot rule will not enable us to do it. 25, 25 feet. 30 feet. 25. 25. The proposal now is 25 oh, feet 25? some of the yard setbacks. It's very close to 25. I'm <laughs> sorry, I, I was speaking to the, the first one. So um, I'll have to get another measurement, but it will be very close to 25 feet. I believe the neighbor's house, which predates mine, is in the 10-foot setback. Irrelevant? All right. Well, in any event, um, we'd have to take another measurement. I think it is very close to 25 feet. Um, but I can tell you um, that where I used to live on Thorndike Street, if I had put up, we put an addition there when our family went from two, uh, three to four people. It was a 1,400 square foot home. Um, we did add on 750 feet, and we would not have been able to do that um, uh, if the rule had passed. So, Thank thanks. You. Appreciate your time. I understand zoning is a contentious artic article. People are on both sides of this issue. Don't interrupt, please. It's not civil. We all took a civility pledge. We have people interrupting. We got people yelling stuff out. We got people clapping. Let's keep it on a calm level and got you Josh and don't be interrupting it's just not nice now Mr. O'Brien you were next who wants a point of information yeah well it's every No, it's a, it's a total between the two houses. No. So none of us under even under, with the sum of the side yards, not less than 25 feet. The sum, yeah. That means you add up between the two houses, right? No. Mr. Belskis, it's your motion. Tell us what it means, please. Mr. O'Brien, this is not taking your time. Uh, Andy O'Brien. No, no, Andy, I asked Mr. Bell oh, to sorry, answer sorry. a question, oh. but stay there because you're up next. He's going to just tell us what this means so we all understand. Could you put that slide back up that shows? This configuration is for a lot. Our objective at the time was that you got to look at it with two lots side by side. If someone decides to tear down a house in the lot next to you, this would apply in your favor because they'd have to keep that 12 and a half foot space or 12 and a half and the so, 10. So if I understand, it has nothing to do with the dimensions between the two homes. It's the 25 feet on my property. I can go 12 with 12 or, tw or 10 and 15. Correct. Nothing to do with the house next door. Okay, thank you. I understand now. Mr. O'Brien. Uh, Andy O'Brien, Precinct 16. Um, so in, in my precinct, um, I, I did hear from a, a number of homeowners, and I guess I'll just relay just one uh, story. And uh, so we ended up talking about our mothers who were both in their 80s, uh, widowed. And I was just thinking of my own mother, who, who lives in, doesn't live in Arlington, but like this person, has a small Cape-style house. And uh, during the uh, financial crunch, um, you know, my mother had a good financial advisor, and like a lot of people, could no longer you know, put money in treasuries to get the income she wanted and was advised to put uh, money in uh, bonds in certain banks and preferred stocks. And as many, as, as you might know, not all these banks are around anymore. And so 
you know, my mother's had to eat into capital. And uh, so now she, you know, she won't accept help from her kids, but now, you know, she's thinking, well, do I, the only value I have left in my property is my house. And, um, you know, she's deciding, does she want to sell or does she want to reverse mortgage? So, you know, a lot of our wealth is in our real estate. And just as we probably gifted some folks on the other vote by increasing the value of property along Mass Ave, any one of these, uh, in my opinion, uh, setbacks or height restrictions, any one of these will potentially take away wealth from people. And, and in some cases, this will take away, you know, money that people might need to, to live and survive on. Um, this gentleman I told, talked to said that his mother, who does live in Arlington, is considering a, a similar type of situation. Um, so for, for this reason, I don't like the looks of a lot of the construction that's going on. Um, but, you know, plot lines have already been drawn. Uh, you know, a lot of these happened, as it was mentioned, many years ago. And uh, I think that we uh, should really consider not taking away basically wealth from you know, the, the remaining wealth that many folks have. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mr. Greeley? Thank you, Ms. Moderator, Kevin Greeley, Precinct 11. I'd like to request that resident Steve McKenna address the body. Thank you, sir. Mr. McKenna is a town resident. He's allowed to address the body. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good evening, town meeting members. Tonight, there are two words I want to speak about, respect and confusion. The name and address? And I'm addressing Article 14, as well as all, I'm sorry, <laughs> Precinct 13, Upland Road, Arlington, Mass. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Belskis. So I'm here to speak about Article 14, as well as all the articles that have been proposed before us in the past Monday and coming up this following week. But first, with regards to some comments that were made on Monday, the Arlington Redevelopment Board, I've been here for 30 years, and there are times that I'm on the opposing side of the Arlington Redevelopment Board or on the same side. Whatever we do in conjunction with those meetings, we've held respect for one another. We understand the positions, and these are town meeting members that are here taking their own time away from their families to make this town better. And I appreciate the opposing side, Mr. Warden's group as well. They're doing the same thing. Both sides are trying to make this town better. We may not all agree, but we should respect the other person's opinion. With that comment, I was very disappointed with the, the discussions that Mr. Warden had to say about the redevelopment board, almost as if they were working for the developers. I've worked with very different groups over my career, with the planning board and so forth, and I've never seen that happen. And those boards and the planning board and the redevelopment board have nothing but the highest regard and respect for everybody in this town and for their property rights. With that said, I've also been disappointed with some of the comments people have had to make about Mr. Warden and his house. Everyone has the right to live in a house that they want to. Whether he wants to live in a 5,000 square foot house is his right. Same as the couple that live in a 1,200 square foot house in Kelwin Manor that they bought four years ago and they want to increase it to 2,000 square feet but these zoning bylaws will not allow them to do so. Same for the gentleman who wants to build and renovate his house on Elmore Road, but these proposed zoning bylaws will not allow he and his family to do so. Or same for one of the gentlemen that previously spoke, that is the family of Dr. Carey, of whom many of you may know, that because their mother is ill, they want to put an addition on their house, but these proposed zoning bylaws will not help them out. That's the respect we need to do. We need to respect what the zoning bylaws need to offer all of us and provide each person in this town. Not every lot is created equal. Not every home is created equal, and certainly not every person is created equal. And we all need to be treated with respect and fairness. With regards to the real reason why we're here, let's just be blunt about it. 
The elephant room is the builder. Nobody appears to be happy with some of the new constructions. And I will tell you that my colleagues in the real estate industry, my neighbors, my fellow town people, we all agree that the builders could do a little bit better job in understanding. So the builders need to have a little bit more respect and understanding of what we're trying to accomplish here in this meeting. We need to understand that we want to live and cohabitate in this town that we all love, but there has to be a balance. And what the ARB said on Monday when they opposed and voted no action at 8, 9, 10 was after having those meetings and hearings, they understood what we were trying to say. My colleagues and I are not here to defend the builders. We're here to defend every single homeowner who has the God-given right to protect their property, to increase their value, to keep the family safe, and to encourage the opportunity that they want to bring an elderly parent in to take care of them or expand their family, they should do so. How much time do I have? Oh, I'm doing well. A few other things is there's been a word calling around called McMansions. Everybody has a different definition of McMansion, and you may all be surprised as to what my defi definition of McMansion is. My family had five children, my mother and father, and we had a dog and a cat. We lived in, for the first 16 years of my life, and I'm the middle child, in 500 square feet in a four-room apartment. When we moved to a five-room apartment, that was a McMansion to me. So if someone is living in a 1,200 square foot home and they want to move and create space to 2,000 square feet or add a living space on for their family, that's not necessarily McMansion. We provided a package to you early and there was a typo in that with regards to some of the information that dated 2017. But if you look at that data from multiple listing which records sales since 2012, the sales have shown you that the average square footage is much smaller than you've been told here. Finally, confusion. You can see from everybody coming up here talking, there have been amendments after amendments after amendments. That's because what has been written is absolutely confusing. We've had attorneys, we've had the Greater Boston Real Estate Board look at this. They can't find a reason how to make these work. If we in our industry don't understand what we've been doing for 30 years, if the Redevelopment Board doesn't, then how can you make a decision on these bylaws unless you fully understand them? We need to recodify these bylaws. We need to start from scratch and not piecemeal. They affect everybody. Everything you're voting on today that you're considering has an action. And unless you know the zoning bylaws from front to back, you have no knowledge of how you're affecting homeowners. These were manipulated, creative, calculated changes made to the zoning bylaws, and they've changed them three times since we've gotten involved to protect homeowners' rights. Please do not vote for any of these amendments of this floor, and let's hope that we can put a committee together that protects every homeowners and their rights and their abilities and respect what people are trying to do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Veraglou, right behind you. Uh -huh. Staff of our Ugly Precinct 10. What are the words to call the question? <laughs> a motion to terminate debate in the article Mo and all motions. Motion all to terminate debate uh, um, on the article. All matters on the article. In the article. Um, and all articles. Uh, just motion to terminate debate. Motion on to everything. terminate debate. Thank you. <laughs> we have a motion to terminate debate on everything. Seconded. It's been seconded. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. I think it is a two thirds vote. Debate is terminated. We have a zoning article, and before it requires a two thirds vote. We all have the proposed language. Uh, wait a second, we have Mr. Um, first of all, we're going to vote on Mr. Belskis' substitute motion. Order, order, order. Sir? No. That's my first phone call tomorrow morning, and I think it's Mr. Chapdelaine's first phone call after I tell him what my first phone call happened. Not only that, we should have a backup person. So we're going to do it. Um, first, we have the motion to substitute Mr. Belskis's substitute motion for the ARB's recommended vote of no action. That's a majority vote. Then, if it passes, we'll take a two-thirds vote on it. All in favor of Mr. Belskis's substitute motion, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. In my opinion, it is not substituted. That leaves us with the recommended vote of the ARB of no action. All in favor of no action, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. It is a no action vote. That closes Article 14.
And that brings us to Article 15. Ms. Evans? Yep, we have a recommended vote of no action. Mr. Warden is going to, who's going to introduce your substitute? Mr. Warden, okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I have a substitute motion which um, has been passed out to everybody, and uh, do you have a copy of it? Um, if not, I'm glad to yes, give I you one. Yes, I have a copy. Hmm? You're all set. Okay, are my, my pictures up? Okay, good. All right, um, uh, John Worden, uh, uh, Precinct 8. Um, I uh, move the... Uh, I move that we substitute uh, the motion uh, that I presented to you under Article 15 for the no action recommendation of the Redevelopment Board. Um, um, Do we have a second? second. Okay, the motion is not before us. This, um, this is the master plan. A lot of you participated in it. I hope all of you have seen it. Everyone should have a copy of it. Um, just about 11 months ago, uh, at the last session of last year's town meeting, um, I stood before you and urged you to endorse it. For the reason that it made extensive references to the need to take action to protect Arlington's residential neighborhoods from the ec epidemic of teardowns and, and mansionizations. That was afflicting every part of the community. You'll see that there are a lot of stickies in this book, um, all different colors, actually. Um, and um, the, um, those mark the references to the protection of residential neighborhoods that were in the master plan. I didn't find anything anywhere in the master plan that spoke about protecting the profits of developers and real estate brokers as one of the goals that were adopted in that plan. When I saw that the Arlington Redevelopment Board uh, was going to, and, and for their agenda for the September 15 meeting, was going to um, discuss zoning articles, oh, that's much better, um, uh, I attended. When it got to the point, that part in the agenda, I, I stated that I had some ideas and hoped that we could work together to bring them forward for the protection of neighborhoods. They encouraged me to do so, so I thought that they were serious about what they had undertaken as goals by adopting the master plan. I was wrong. After many meetings with the board and with staff, they voted no action on our entire agenda. Article 15, the vote on which is substantially the same as what was in the warrant, so I don't think there can be any confusion, um, is the most important part of that agenda. Subsequent speakers will deal with some of the d details, but the basic concept is that when we buy a house, we're not just buying an isolated building surrounded by many acres. We're buying into a neighborhood. Indeed, that neighborhood may be a significant factor in, in uh, attracting us to a particular house. It has become our neighborhood. And, and, and we, have it, we have a stake in what goes on there. Change may be inevitable, but the, when change occurs, we should have some voice in that process. Under current law, if you want to make an addition of more than 750 square feet, or 50% of your gross floor area, you need to seek a special permit from the zoning board. That means a public hearing and an opportunity for the public to participate. But if a developer buys the house next door, and tears it down, he can build anything he wants, right up to the very minimal setback limits of the zoning bylaws, which by your vote a moment ago uh, shows that you think are fine, um, with no special permit. Article 15 would close this loophole. Basically, this article doesn't say you can't build a big house. It doesn't, doesn't say you can't build a new house. It does say that whatever you do whatever you plan to build must go through a public process so that the folks who have chosen to and invested in that neighborhood
can get notice, have a voice, and the zoning board can require that the new building fits in. Caught in the same net, if you will, are people who own a small one and a half story house and want to raise the roof. Uh, many such houses are designed to accommodate just such an extension to deal with the needs of a growing family, for example. Currently, if they stay within the original footprint, they don't need a special permit. Under this amendment, they will. That's not to say they can't do it, they just have to go through a permit process. Two minutes. Two minutes? Two minutes. Oh dear. Um, well, I'll try to speak more quickly. If, if, if that was all that was happening under the foundation loophole, we would not be here. But it's being so exploited by developers that it needs to be closed. The filing fee is something like $50, and there is some delay. But the additional cost was minimal compared to the cost of the addition. Um, and, um, and, 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 and I think is, is a fair price for keeping the whole neighborhood the way you like it. No doubt you've seen some of the propaganda put out by the real estate and development community, uh, much of it anonymously. Uh, it claims that a bunch of, and this is very important because several speakers have referenced this tonight. If you look at those pictures in the, the, uh, the flyer, and it says all these examples couldn't have happened if these zoning bylaws amendments were adopted, every one of those is wrong, okay? Don't be scared by that stuff. They're making it up. And they haven't, they haven't bothered to look at what the amendments that are actually being proposed are, are put on. Um, now, I see um, that my time is running out, so I will, gee, the best part of the speech is just coming. You're not gonna get the benefit of it. Um, <laughs> um, but the, the, the two images behind me, these are houses built, what the redevelopment board thinks is fine, under present zoning bylaws. Now, when I stop speaking, those images will disappear, but please keep them in your mind and just think, when you come to vote, would I want something like that built next to me or next to the house of my, my neighbors, my relatives, or anybody I care about? That is, that is what's here tonight, and all we're asking is that if you're build, gonna build a new house, from a tear down, doesn't affect vacant lots, that, that, that you get a special permit. So please vote yes to substitute and yes for the articles substituted. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Pyle. Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Pyle. I'm a new town meeting member from Precinct 10. I am also a zoning and land use attorney. I've lived in Arlington for six years, and before that, I was the chair of the Somerville Conservation Commission for 10 years. I am asking that you vote yes tonight on the substitute motion for Article 16. Under the zoning bylaw that we have right now, if you're a homeowner, I'm sorry, 15, 15, that's right. Under the zoning bylaw we have right now, if you're a homeowner and you want to put a large addition on your house, you have to get a special permit. You do that by demonstrating to the zoning board that your addition will be in harmony with other structures and uses in the vicinity. But if a developer wants to tear down a house entirely and build a bigger structure in its place, he can do that with no zoning board oversight at all. And the new building does not have to be in harmony with the other structures in the vicinity. This amendment simply closes that loophole. Tear down rebuild should be in harmony with their neighborhoods. They often have just as much, if not more of an impact on neighbors than large additions, so they should be subject to the same special permit requirement. This is basic fairness. This is not a proposal to ban tear down rebuilds or renovations. There's been that flyer going around showing what are supposedly projects that would not have been allowed under this proposal. That is false. This amendment would not ban those projects. It simply gives the zoning board a role in deciding whether the proposed new building is in harmony with the neighborhood, just as it currently does for large additions of a similar size. Review by the zoning board is also important because it gives the neighbors notice of the project and a voice to be heard. Under this amendment, people who live ne next to tear down rebuilds will be able to come to the zoning board to say how the project will affect their quality of life 
and to raise any issues if the addition will have an impact on their property in terms of blocking sunlight, causing drainage problems, or any other effects. The neighbors have that right now for large additions. They should have it for tear down rebuilds too. I know the effects of the special permit provision firsthand because the house across the street from me wanted to put on a large addition that would have made the entire structure 8,900 square feet. This was too massive for our neighborhood. They went, because it was a large addition, to the zoning board who properly reviewed it. We all had input, we all had a voice, we could all participate in the process. The zoning board uh, made a determination that they should scale it back and they did so, and they came back with an addition that would make the entire house 6,450 square feet. However, throughout it all, there was the threat that they would just tear the whole thing down and build the 8,900 square foot house, which they could have done because of this current loophole. People who live next to tear down rebuilds should have the same right that I had to go before the zoning board to explain how the project will affect them. This amendment will ensure that they have that right, that voice. There are additional reasons for adopting this amendment as well. First, the current bylaw creates the wrong incentive because right now it is easier for a developer to do a teardown rebuild than it is to renovate and expand an existing home. A teardown rebuild doesn't have to get a special permit and it doesn't have to be in harmony with the neighborhood. This is the wrong incentive in our zoning bylaw and it should be changed and you should change it here tonight. It's also out of step with the master plan adopted by town meeting where residents stated they wanted to exercise greater control over new development and that they were concerned that new development was out of scale or character with the qualities that they value in their community. Second, this amendment specifically addresses the concerns in the master plan by allowing the zoning board to consider the scale of new construction and the potential effects of shadow and sunlight and the impact on nearby properties. Third, it will include the cumulative effect of additions from the previous five years when calculating what work qualifies as a special permit, uh, for a large addition and a special permit. Now, there's been some suggestion by developers that this amendment will delay renovations on existing homes. I have spoken with the member of the current zoning board who informed me that the projected increase in special permits would be manageable. The zoning board can meet as often as every other week, but it usually only meets monthly because it doesn't have enough business to meet more often than that. People can get on the board's agenda quickly and most projects are resolved in one to two hearings. So two this minutes. is a project that takes weeks and not months to resolve. This will not be a hardship. Now, an Arlington Advocate review of town permits found that there have been 68 teardowns in Arlington permitted in the last five years. In 2015, there were 25 demolition permits, almost twice as many as the year before. In 2014, there were 13 demolition permits, and in 2013, there were eight. We are in a building boom here, and reasonable controls, like the special permit requirement in Article 15, should be implemented now. Now I understand some people may want to further study residential zoning, and if that's the case, the study period should go hand in glove with this change in this amendment. In other words, any committee formed to study residential zoning changes should study the issue broadly, and if town meeting approves those changes and the changes that we're proposing, it can study the impact of what happens tonight going forward. That way, if unanticipated issues come up, with anything that happens tonight in terms of residential zoning, the study group will have a vehicle to identify them. But further study should not be a reason to delay this change. If we wait to make this change, residential construction will continue full speed and the historic character of our neighborhoods will be changed without our input. Finally, as to Article 15, we as town members, town meeting members, represent neighborhoods. We all have an obligation to protect our neighborhoods and the quality of life of our constituents. This amendment will do just that by allowing public participation and review by the zoning board for tear down rebuilds, closing the loophole that exempts them now. We don't have large lots here in Arlington. All of our houses are very close Time. to each other. What your neighbor does affects you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, let's take a seven minute break. We'll come back and pick up. So I have to do something. I forgot to ask the clerk a question under the special town meeting, so right now I'm going to reopen the special town meeting for about two minutes, and I'm going to close it back up and go back to this article. So we are right now, I got a motion to reopen the special town meeting. Mr. Moore just made it, seconded all voting in favor, voted in favor, yes. We are now under Article 5 of the special town meeting. Madam Clerk, do you certify that there are 87 members present and voting? Yes, she does. Okay, thank you very much. Motion to close the special town meeting. Mr. Moore, thank you very much. All in favor, please say yes. Thank you very much. We are now back in this regular town meeting. Ms. Warden, you have the floor. Patricia. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Patricia Warden, Precinct 8, molecular biologist by trade and training, longtime activist in education, housing, and land use conservation. Served as the chairman of the Arlington School Committee, chairman of Arlington Housing Authority, and member of the Permanent Building Committee. Member of the Affordable Housing Task Force when we in that group created Arlington's Affordable Housing Zoning Bylaw 16 years ago and got approval from town meeting despite delays, unfortunate delays from the redevelopment board and some in the development industry, which delay caused Arlington to lose affordable units, just as if we uh, don't get your approval on Article 15, Ar Arlington will lose more houses and historic houses. Arlington was a leader in affordable inclusionary zoning and our bylaw, which we created, is one of the best in the Commonwealth. Let's hope we can be a leader in softening the tear down damage. Article 15, if approved here, will assure you of notice of a tear down about to happen near your property and give you a voice in what gets built, helping to remove the dread and helplessness which happens when the house next door to you is sold to a developer, it will discourage teardown rebuilds in favor of renovation. Arlington's administration has left us completely unprotected against the teardown epidemic. We have to be able to add and to and renovate our homes. Quality of average pre-World War II homes is usually much better than houses built today. Quality of the wood use is incomparably better. Median date of construction of Arlington houses is 1931. Average age is 81. 81 years. Article 15 will encourage increase in value of these homes by renovation rather than surrendering to demolition. Much of our older housing stock, including historic houses, is marked for extinction by teardown operators and will never get the chance for rehab. Realtors can make double commissions from these deals. Arlington is the golden goose for them. Fortunately, some of our local realtors and contractors uh, are not involved and don't um, do these teardown operations. According to the master plan, teardown and infill pressure is particularly bad, quote, in areas of smaller, modest housing stock, which are vulnerable to demolition for larger homes and multifamily duplexes. Uh, built to the maximum height and minimum setbacks allowed under zoning, end of quote. Increase in housing units and resulting population increases due to current overbuilding will give a brief increase in tax revenue for Arlington, but in the long run, increased expense of school and municipal services and particularly of new school building needs will far outweigh the little bump in revenue we get initially. Our schools will suffer. In New England, unlike most places in the world, we are lucky that town meeting members and only town meeting members have the power to control zoning, not the Ar Arlington Redevelopment Board, not the Board of Selectmen, just you and only you. And so, if we do not give Article 15 a two-thirds approval vote here tonight, we and we alone will be to blame for the continued destruction ar arising from the teardown epidemic. Teardown rebuilds are gradually destroying Arlington's pretty streetscapes, removing beautiful trees, clear-cutting lots, building humongous houses which re reduce light and views for residents and reducing gra grassy areas for children to play. There are building houses that are much too expensive for starting families or retirees, destroying affordability. Young parents who would like to buy existing houses and do their own renovations may get more of a chance if we pass Article 15. In favor of teardown, some say that these houses are obsolete or inefficient 
and so need to be destroyed and replaced. One of our sons, some years ago, just before getting married, wanted to buy a house with a little extra land in Arlington. He could not find anything he could afford, and so he bought an old rundown house in a further suburb, almost 200 years old. He renovated it, insulated it, fitted it with photovoltaics and so on. That house uses only very little electricity from the grid in winter, and in summer, uses none. In fact, pumps electricity back into the grid all summer. I'm willing to bet that his old house is more efficient than any new house built in Arlington. So much for the obsolete argument favoring teardowns. Article 15 will help make Arlington a more sustainable community by facilitating rehab rather than demolition. It will decrease demolition construction waste, which is the biggest contributor to landfill waste in the United States. Waste that's out of sight and out of mind. Waste we don't want to hear about or think about. How can Arlington consider itself a sustainable community while doing nothing about well-made Arlington houses and their superior building materials being demolished and trucked off one after another to the landfill? I do not think that that would meet with approval from any of our favorite sustainability advocates, such as Bernie Sanders or Pope Francis. Here's Pope Francis' little book on the subject, if anyone wants to borrow it. And it's good that turned on um, teardown developers make for their teardowns is often that older owners, seniors like me, need to get the maximum possible price for their home. But what proof is there that the sellers are really getting the best price when some of these houses never even get on the open market or are snapped up when they have scarcely seen the light of day? Article 15 protects the interests of carpenters and tradespeople who have served Arlington residents well in the renovation and addition needs and who are not part of any teardown operations. I suppose it's perhaps beside the point, but the most famous person who ever lived just happened to be a carpenter about 2,000 years ago. Since we know what the teardown and rebuild problems are One minute. and how to address One them, minute. then if we choose to do nothing about it, we in fact become enablers of the damage. That is why I became involved in this project and why I respectfully ask for your vote for Article 15. Please just say yes for Article 15. Your neighbors will be forever grateful. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Sir. Lucky I have uh, flexible legs. Steve Revelac, uh, 111 Sunnyside Avenue in Precinct 1. Um, during the last couple of weeks, in an effort to wrap my head around the zoning stuff, um, while well, I've been trying to give myself a crash course, and as the gentleman said uh, the other night, you know, this, this is kind of tricky. But if you like puzzles, it's, it's almost kind of fun. Um, I don't know what that says about me, but... The current zoning bylaws that we have were passed during a special town meeting in October of 1975. Um, it was the fourth town meeting of 1975. Talk about, like, yeah. But um, one of the, the, and they replaced uh, a set of zoning articles that had been put in place in 1924. And at the time, the at least according to uh, some of the newspaper articles I've read from, you know, around the time that, this town meeting was held. Um, the general feelings was, well, over the last 51 years, our zoning laws have gotten, they've been, gotten antiquated, and they've been tweaked and tweaked over 50 years, and they're very complex, and they're hard to understand, and they're inconsistent, and let's just throw it out and start all over again. Um, so that's what they did. And one of the two, one of the two goal, or two of the goals that they had at the time were to um, uh, promote commercial development, and to um, protect our residential neighborhoods, which sounds eerily familiar. Um, but, you know, the original, ver the 1975 version of our zoning bylaw was all of 18 pages, and I think the current one is about 132 pages. It's, it's gotten slightly more complex, and, you know, I, I think the, the sentiment of the folks of 1975 was sort of the sentiment of you know, it, it aligns with the um, review of our zoning bylaws. It's in the back of the master plan. It's, you know, just gotten a little unwieldy uh, over the years. But one of the things that really impressed me about, you know, the, the, what they did in 1975, um, you know, there's an article from The Advocate, and it talks about the ARB doing a, a detailed survey of all 12,500 houses in Arlington at the time um, in order to kind of plan things out, um, 
pick districts that were appropriate to what was there and even even getting the zoning boundaries to match property lines, which I guess they didn't all do at that case. Um, so with that, I have really, Mr. Moderator, um, I really have just one question and I'd like to uh, preferably direct it to um, Article 15's proponents, but uh, anyone is welcome to answer. Now, I, um, the folks at the Inspectional Services told me that you know, there were, in fact, 25 teardowns during 2015. Um, so I'm wondering, what out of that 25, roughly what number would have been required uh, to obtain a special permit under Article 15? Uh, that's all. Mr. Byrne, do you have an answer for that? Under of 25 teardowns last year, how many would have to come for a special <coughs> permit under this proposed article? The way I read the proposal, it would be all of them. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Burnell? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Andrew Bunnell, Chair of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, the board has no formal opinion as to Mr. Warden's amendment. However, our original opposition to Article 15 uh, was based on the increased pressure, not on necessarily on the Zoning Board of Appeals, but on staff, inspectional services, and other town employees who are already tasked with reviewing every special permit that comes through. Um, our opinion, as stated during our public hearing back in March, uh, was that new structures should be subject to zoning's dimensional criteria, not by what was there before. We are committed toward working toward that uh, as we go through our review. Um, and I want to say one thing about the master plan. This is a document that we take extremely seriously. Uh, we worked very hard to get it implemented over a two and a half year process uh, and have been working on it since it was passed by town meeting last year. Um, we also recognize that not all, all calls to action should be done immediately. Uh, zoning is tricky. Uh, zoning is difficult. Zoning impacts every homeowner, every resident in Arlington. Before you move forward on this, you need to be very careful that you're not negatively impacting existing homeowners who may want to make changes, uh, who, may want, who may have families and may want to stay in Arlington. Those are the families that we need to be thinking about and protecting. And those are the things that are on my mind as we make decisions here. I urge you to vote against Article 15 and all f subsequent zoning bylaws. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. LaCourt. Annie LaCourt, Precinct 15. Um, I'd like to get some data on the table, if I might. Um, do we have any information on the 68 permits that were pulled in 2016 in terms of the number of square feet that was built on average for those properties? Do you have that, Mr. Byrne? No. Would we be able to compile that information if we had some time? Yeah, I don't understand the question. Like, this, what are the 68 permits? Uh? Um, I, I'm quoting Ms. Pyle who said there were 68 permits pulled for teardown rebuilds in the last oh, year? The last five years. Five last years. five yeah. years, right. okay. Um, Even better. Yeah, right. Do we have any idea how large many of those were? No, not offhand, I wouldn't. I'd maybe I would have to go through all the plans for the 68 okay. of them and maybe speak to the assessor's office and we could probably come up with something. Okay. No, no, not easily, but we could. All right. Um, and can you tell me how many um, uh, special permit hearings are held a year now? by the Zoning Board of Appeals? Last year there were 16 dockets. So if we added the 25 permits that were filled, we'd be tripling approximately the number of special permit hearings? Well, I think we'd be adding a lot more than the 25. Okay. The 25 would be for the new houses. If you take in the large additions, uh, which would be raising a ranch for second floor, okay. um, the, I was asked by one of the media outlets to look at the 2015 okay. if this was in effect. I okay. was over 100 special permits. Okay, so over 100 special permits. And on average, do you know how long it takes to get one of those special permits processed? Is it one hearing, two hearings? No. Uh, pre presently, well, once someone applies, they generally get a hearing within 30 days. Okay. And the board has 90 days to write the decision. And then once it's written and filed, there's a 20-day appeal period. 
that's that's assuming there's no continuances. Do they which, usually which could, take 90 days? They, they, are, they are close to that, yeah. Okay, so it could be 30 days to the hearing, it could be 90 days to the decision, right. and then there's a 20-day appeal period. So even if they were very efficient and they were able to do the hearing in a few weeks and write the decision in 30 days, mm -hmm. we're still talking several months. Yes. Which yes. could be half a building season. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, I agree with the master plan. I think that um, we probably have an issue in town of needing to have tighter control on development. I'm not sure we have the right answer either in this article or any of the zoning articles in front of us. Part of the reason is because I don't think we have a lot of data. I don't think we understand as a community what it is we don't like. I don't think we have use cases in front of us. We don't have pictures. We don't have something where we can say, I like that, but I don't like that. Okay. And then I have another problem, which is I'm thinking of my neighborhood. So I live uh, across the street from Stratton School. I have this nice view of Mountain Avenue. There are six houses across the street from me that used to be small ranches. And when the first one of them was turned into a nice colonial, went from probably a five-room house to a seven-room house, um, that looked out of scale with the neighborhood. But now four of them have been topped. So now what's the scale of the neighborhood? Similar problem on Dixon Avenue behind that. The first house that got turned from a cape into a colonial looked a little out of scale with the neighborhood but now there are six of them and none of them are what i would call a mcmansion none of them are what are the kind of development when i wander around town i go oh my god that's not the kind of thing i'd like to see us building in arlington so i'm not sure that we have consensus on what exactly we want what i'd like to see us do is task the arb with going back and running a good public process to find out what people in neighborhoods are really concerned about, have some good examples that town meeting can look at, have some examples of the kinds of things that would still be permitted so we know clearly the effect on what is the major asset of almost every homeowner in town, the property that they own. If we pass a zoning bylaw like this or the other similar zoning bylaws that we're looking at that affect the size of the home you can build on your lot. Okay, and then I'd like to understand what the burden is on the process and I'd like to see as if we're going to triple or quadruple the number of special permits that we're going to run through this system for us to improve the efficiency of that system and make those changes before we swamp it and we put people in the position of deciding in March that they'd love to add to their house this summer and discovering they can't do it because they're going to spend half the building season waiting for a permit something they didn't know about till they started thinking about building the house because nobody checks the process until they're thinking about running the process. And it seems to me that 120 days is unconscionable. So um, in case you haven't been able to tell yet, <laughs> I'm opposed to passing this article tonight, but I'd like to see the appropriate article or set of articles to deal with the agreed upon problem come back to us at next year's town meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Christopher Moore, Precinct 14. I have a couple of questions about the, the uh, different processes that will exist um, for the special permits. First of them uh, is the difference between the ZBA and the ARB uh, and the length of the process that a homeowner might expect from each. I think from the last speaker we heard that from the, ZB, the ZBA we might expect 90 days plus 30. Um, can we have a, an answer to what the ARB might take and, and what the difference in the process would be like? Mr. Burnell? The process is the same for all special permits. It's set by Mass General Law, Chapter 48, Section 9. Can you tell us what that is? <laughs> <laughs> it involves an application. Uh, and again, as Mr. Burns said, out following the application, uh, there needs to be publication in the newspaper of record. Homeowners will have to wait for publication to happen and then to receive a date in front of the appropriate uh, governing authority. After that, there is a 90-day uh, limit on decisions to be written. Uh, again, that applies to both the ARB and the ZBA. Following the issuance of a decision, there is a 20-day application per uh, appeal period that needs to expire before a de uh, decision can be recorded. Uh, in addition to special permit time, 
Uh, there's also the increased cost of attorneys, increased costs in construction delays, uh, and getting into the building season. Thank you. Thank you. I'm generally supportive of closing this loophole because it seems strange that building an addition is harder than knocking a house down. Um, there's another thing here that I, I wanted to ask about as well, and that's the, uh, the uh, requirement that the Z, ZBA or the ARB, whoever it is, um, consider the potential effects of shadows and sunlight on the properties. I'm wondering if somebody from the ZBA could answer how they might go about doing that, if they have a process for it now, or if they will be inventing one. Is there any ZBA members here? Guess not. Guess okay. Not. <laughs> and Mr. Byrne? What? Oh, Christian, Mr. Klein. Ah. Sorry, I didn't see you back there. I forgot you were on it. Uh, good evening, Christian Klein, Precinct 10, member of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, so we are a five-member five board with two alternates, um, and we hear special permit and variance cases um, that come before the town. Um, in specific relation to the, the question about uh, sunlight and the way it affects properties, um, we are beholden to the quality of the information that is provided to us. Um, we cannot direct people to perform studies. Um, so if there are cases where people do bring solar studies to us and we can take that into account, um, but it's very rare that we, that we do see that level of, um, of detail at the, for packages that are specifically coming for a special permit. So would you say that the change in the bylaw that uh, Article 15 includes here to include potential s effects of sunlight and shadow is something you already do if you have the information? Exactly, but, okay. if, it, but it's the, if it becomes a requirement, then you know, there is an additional burden of proof that's going to have to come from the proponents of it, um, and then we will obviously have to review it as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, one other question. Uh, a number of previous commenters have, have mentioned the, the lack of protection for historic homes and seem to suggest that this uh, would help in that respect. Are there no other protections for historic homes being knocked down or to prevent historic homes from being knocked down? Mr. Byrne. Yeah, the, the, uh, the Historic Commission, uh, the Historic District Commission, they have demolition delays. Uh, so commission significant properties is a one-year demolition delay on, on those properties. But it's only a delay? On that, yeah, the historic district w w is in perpetuity as far as I can see. But, but the only thing they can impose is a delay, not a, uh, Correct. a change. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. thank you very much. Thank you. Chief Jefferson. <coughs> uh, it's Bob Jefferson, Precinct 12. Um, I rise in opposition to the uh, proposed amendment uh, substitute motion by Mr. Warden, and I ask you to support the uh, recommendation of no action by the Arlington Redevelopment Board. For the arguments that were given earlier on the previous article, article, um, thank you, um, on article 14, there's a lot of information here. I think it needs to go back to the Redevelopment Board who's been working on it for months and come back with some more solid information um, I've been following it as best I can. It's far from my area of expertise. Um, but I think the redevelopment board's put a lot of time in. I understand some of the concerns of the proponents, but I am going to rise in opposition. I will be voting against that. You know, living in town my whole life, I've lived in the East End, live up the Heights now, um, in what I do for, for work, I see almost all these teardowns. Most of these buildings that are getting torn down are old, dilapidated, small ranches and capes. I see almost every one of them gets turned down. I'm one of the guys that sign off on that demo permit. I may not be happy with what goes up by the contractor at a given point for the, a house, but most of the property that's going up are an improvement to what was there and are an improvement to the neighborhood. And that's something we should be looking at. Mr. Moderator, I would request that my additional time um, a town resident, Jonathan Nyberg, be allowed to address the membership. Mr. Nyberg has the right to speak. You all. Thank you. He has five minutes and 48 seconds. Thank 46. you. 
Wait Good on. evening. My name is Jonathan Nyberg, and I live at 129 Lake Street, uh, also known by many of you as the former Arlington Rest Home. So I call myself a bit of a house missionary. I, too, love to restore, collect, save uh, older houses in Arlington and have probably done about 10 of them in the last 20 years. Um, with all, if I may say, with all due respect to Mr. Warden, he recently just showed a couple of pictures of unsheathed, unfinished homes, large homes, and I think to be fair to all of us, it would have been nice if he had showed the finished product of the home. Uh, the one at 17 Grandview, which is the house on the left, I recently sold, and it turned out to be a beautiful classic colonial with some historical, a reflection of historical details. Uh, next Wednesday, a new couple from uh, Charlestown are moving into that house, and will you know, provide our community additional some additional resources, new energy, et cetera. So I think we can't forget that piece of it also. I'd like to, yeah, as they move in, also they become part of the fabric of our community. And one of the things I do love about our community is the diversity of residents, religions, and, re and, and homes. And I think that's a piece that we're also mixing up is it's it's okay in a neighborhood to have diversity of types of homes, colonials, capes, ranches, etc. I, like Mr. Warden, though, live in a huge house on a big piece of land. And to be totally honest, most of these articles won't affect us. So my concern tonight is for the people who live in smaller houses, smaller lots, smaller homes, and I'm not making an assumption, but maybe have a smaller budget to work with. And those are the people that I think these will eventually affect the most. As I went through, also too, sorry, I also recently went through the process of getting a special permit. Sometimes people make it sound very easy. It's not easy. I just spent a year and thousands and thousands of dollars to get an addition approved. It was approved at the end, but to be fair to myself, until you get to that final approval or rejection, you're still in it for the same amount of money. And for a lot of people, that's not a feasible option. So I sat down and I went through the article tonight. And first of all, it is a, it's not real straightforward. So the first sentence, I was kind of surprised. There's 106 words in the first sentence with three commas. And so I, you know, I'm processing it. I read fairly well. You know, and I can add up, and I'm also, you know, have done additions, et cetera. And I think it is a little challenging. So what I wanted to ask tonight quickly is, if everybody could get out their abacus, I'd like to find out. So if I sold a ranch to a typical client of mine three years ago, they could afford a ranch, they want to be in Arlington, they love Arlington now. It's a thousand square foot ranch, very typical, 900 to 1,000 in Arlington. And their dream is to have a colonial someday. They've always wanted a colonial. So from what I understand about this article, because it's only 1,000 square feet, they can't build up, they can't build a colonial, but they can have a cape, because they could add on 500 square feet. And that's only if they didn't do any little addition on the back of their house within the last five years. If you did anything on the back of your house in five years, now that adds into your calculation, which could be more or less. So at the end of the day, I do think it's more complicated than it needs. I think the building department and the zoning board have good things. Are there places where we could be better? Absolutely. Are there some projects that don't turn out as handsome as others? Absolutely. But I don't think we should pick the exception and make it the rule. So. I, just in closing, I just would like to say and suggest that you vote no on this article, primarily, honestly, just to be fair to all the people in Arlington and not just a few. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Now, come on, guys. I asked once. <laughs> Mr. Jameson. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, 
I want to echo the words, um, start with echoing the words I mentioned last night, the words Mr. the moderator and Mr. McKenna. I've seen people um, uh, get emotional, let's say. Uh, and I, I, I'm speaking against the articles. I think the letter uh, the ARB sent out is appropriate. I have a couple things to run through here. Let me go through my little outline all over this page. Um, uh, next, one of the previous speakers mentioned that people shouldn't be able to build a larger home because they're afraid that they'll have children and our school population will increase. I'm sorry, we're not a gated community. Um, what's number four? I'll jump around. Um, I, I'm very confused about what the proponents are trying to accomplish. At Monday's meeting, we um, very kindly permitted them to, um, and I did vote against it, but, we, but the body permitted them to postpone those articles till next Wednesday. As I mentioned my first time up here for the previous article, I wish that they had um, seen fit to argue all of these next Wednesday because um, what I heard tonight was, in this article, having lost the first one, we're talking about shadows again in this article. So it seems like, from my reading, and I'll ask a question about that in a second, that they're, they're trying to have many bites at the apple. And this is exactly what I think I've heard from the ARB and others on the floor. We do not want a hodgepodge change in the zoning laws. Um, pre one of the previous speakers very did, did a nice history lesson. The first laws were in the 20s. 50 years later, we revised those. And now here we are, almost 50 years later, and we're going to try to revise them again. Let's do it right, to echo the words of Ms. LaCourt. If I understand correctly, um, an existing structure um, increasing by more than 50%, as the previous, the, uh, most last speaker mentioned, or more than 750 feet, would have to have a special permit under this process. We've heard about how long that might, might or might not take. Um, I have a question, I believe, for the ARB, Mr. Moderator. If I had, if I would be so fortunate to have a buildable lot in the town of Arlington, would I need a special permit to build a house? Mr. Bennell? I'm going to defer to Mr. Byrne, or a member of the ZBA, for that Thank question. You. So this is a this is a de novo buildable lot in Arlington, a, a clean lot. Nothing's been built on it. Um, again, the, the proponents have, have put this forward, but I believe it does that would not include a special permit process. And and the process would be determined by dimensional requirements as Correct. existing Correct. In the law. Correct. Yep. That's what I see. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and so that's exactly what I believe um, the ARB's comment on this original article, as in in their report non report is that new structures, um, blah, blah, the um, board expressed that new buildings should continue to be controlled by existing zoning requirements rather than what was previously existed on the lot, and in this case, nothing existed. I'm sorry, my notes are all over the page here. I mentioned that. And lastly, um, I am a co-chair of the Arlington Recycling Committee, and I do um, uh, keep track of what the State of Ma Commonwealth of Massachusetts does with construction waste. We have very rigorous laws about what is done with that, and 90% of the construction waste in, in this state is recycled. It does not go to a landfill. Um, so again, I urge, um, uh, I counsel and urge a vote against this article let the ARB work the process in a greater scope and scale of uh, public involvement and come back maybe next year with an integrated set of articles where we won't have this uh, potential to, to uh, nit nitpick here and nitpick there at the articles going forward, but have something that we could all agree on that's unitized and useful to the town and the betterment of the town. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, Mr. Wagner. You're next on the list. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, for getting to me. Carl Wagner, Precinct 11. Um, I didn't stand up to end the debate, unfortunately. 
I did want to say, though, that uh, it seems to me that these uh, are not all the same, these that we're spending a lot of time talking about, uh, that cover uh, the density of dwellings, that cover uh, whether um, there's some difference between large house owners and small house owners, whether people have the right to change their houses. Uh, and many of us have concerns and have heard from other people in the town of their concerns about being able to expand or improve their houses. Uh, I went to the, uh, the meeting that was uh, available for precinct members last week, and um, I, like you, was unsure about some of the other measures, and, and uh, we didn't support them so far. But, but 15 is different, and I hope you'll consider supporting it, although I sense a, a, a feeling in the room, perhaps, that you're not yet ready to. And I think the simple reason is that somebody a few minutes ago said, it seems like it's easier to tear down a house and put up a new one than it is to just expand your house. And so let's, let's come back with better regulations about how we expand or don't expand our houses later. But let's seriously consider voting yes on this because the primary function that I can see in this is to make it harder to tear down and put something back, or at least to hold it carefully to the boards that are appointed for those purposes to take a close look at a, at a, a tear down and rebuild. Not many of my neighbors, whether they're rich or poor, are tearing down houses and rebuilding. It happens in special circumstances, maybe after a terrible fire or a developer coming in to, to put a completely new set of people in there, and usually, almost always, in a very much larger building. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This gentleman over here. Yep. Good evening. I'm Guillermo Bahamon, Precinct 14. And um, I'm here to tell you that Arlington is a very exciting, welcoming town. I am an ex exile from Cambridge. I was literally banned from Cambridge. I bought a burn house on Humble Avenue in Cambridge. The uh, building department told me or suggested that, that I should tear it down. I rebuilt it. Everyone liked it, except a neighbor across the street who was very upset that, I, that my architectural idea wasn't as historically correct as her architectural idea. I was a registered architect. I studied architectural history with the best architectural historians at Harvard and yet she was very unhappy. So that she tried to keep the moving van from, from, from unloading our things into the new house. And when, and when she couldn't do that, then she, re, she resolved, I thought, in making peace by sending a very nicely gift wrap in Christmas paper. I opened the gift and it was human excrement. So that's, so that, so my, I love Cambridge, but that's, that's, and so, and I love Cambridge and I like to bring the story. And, and so that, and so that through all those 30 years in Cambridge, I'm an architect. I have my own ideas. I think that the best architecture is no architecture. Uh, and yet, and yet I, Somehow, I was under the impression that I was an Indian that escaped the reservation. I did not conform to what was expected of a Cambridge architect. So I came to Arlington. I bought a house on Oakland Avenue. Uh, and all my neighbors, and I'm still touched by all my neighbors, brought a welcome wagon. They brought pies, plants cards and so on and so on. I'm just I, I so I wish that all these zoning battles construction battles uh, color battles uh, uh, and fortunately right now we haven't even discussed aesthetics because what because here there are many things that could be built by right and they are ugly but I would rather have an ugly structure next to my house, which is very pretty, 
if, uh, because I love my neighbors and, 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 and I would rather live with a neighbor that has very bad taste than to a neighbor who just give rap presents that I don't think they are that nice. <laughs> so in, in conclusion, I think that let's give time to the uh, ARB. Uh, it's, a, it's a very difficult, it's a very emotional, uh, emotional matter. Uh, um, my neighbors on, in a Precinct 14, they, they go both ways. And so that they have left it up to me to say, well, just do the best to represent our, uh, uh, our wishes. But we don't even know what our wishes are, except that we want to have a nice neighborhood where, where we walk, we say hello to, e to each other, we walk down to Mass Avenue, we go to the hardware store, we go to D'Agostino's, we go to the bank, we go to the Heights. And so that, and, and, even, and even if we disagree, we still love each other. So that, uh, let's give it a few more months to the ARB just to, uh, just to present something that is going to be acceptable to all of us. We are, all of us are not going to be happy with, 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 with what they propose because change is difficult. But uh, I, I think, well, let's, uh, let's, let's see if we can have a better proposal. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It was the other gentleman there. Bill Kaplan, Precinct 6. Um, I, I agree with a lot of what the previous speaker said. Uh, I, I live in a neighborhood, uh, I'm Kellen Manor adjacent, uh, where, where there have been a bunch of teardowns uh, and the houses that are, weren't torn down and replaced with bigger houses uh, have, have added second floors. And uh, I think there's been probably a dozen million dollar houses going up in my neighborhood since I moved there 10 years ago. And I'm okay with it. Uh, I like my neighbors. I if they want a bigger house, and, and a lot of these houses were done by the people who live there. They weren't all evil developers. Uh, most of them were my neighbors who wanted a bigger house. Uh, I asked one of them uh, who replaced a, a little Cape Cod with a much bigger house, and uh, you know he said that he had priced it out, and it wasn't about permits. It was his old house. It was a little Cape Cod, and it was in bad shape, and it was cheaper to tear it down and put up a new house than it would be to build an addition. Uh, I, I think. I, ideally, we wouldn't spend so much time worrying that our neighbors are getting bigger houses. Um, I, I see the wording here, you know, it, it talks about the addition is in harmony with other structures. And harmony, uh, is there a legal definition of harmony? I, I mean, that seems very subjective. Uh, so again, I, I guess I see houses going up and some of them I like and some of them I don't like. I mean, right now, uh, two doors down from me, there's a house that's about to be torn down. It's already been stripped, uh, and the, it was sold to a developer. And there's two houses are going up in the space that the one house was in, and I'm okay with it. Uh, across the street from them is a pit where the house was, Little Cape Cod was torn down maybe a month ago, and I assume they're building something there, uh, and I'm okay with it. Uh, and the neighbor next to him is halfway through putting a second floor in his house, and I'm okay with it. Um, None of these things really hurt me. Uh, in fact, uh, at, the, at the, uh, our, our precinct meetings on Sunday, I asked the, the chair of the finance committee, uh, we have a lot of things coming up, uh, you know, overrides and debt exclusions, and I just asked him about how much, how much did he think that was gonna cost? How much would it add to the average tax bill? And uh, can you, I, can I ask you that? Uh, that's kind of out of scope, or, yeah. Well, well, the scope is the, uh, he, he, our taxes are gonna go up a lot. Uh, one way that our taxes will go up a little less is if the, the $400,000 house next door becomes an $800,000 house, because they'll be paying more taxes. And not only am I, not only am I okay with that, I'm happy for that. I, I, I am ecstatic. And, and frankly, most of these, this, this isn't like one person selling to a family of six. This is a family of three getting a bigger house. So it's not even gonna cost us more. Um, so yeah, I think every time we do anything, we talk about maintaining our property values and increasing our property values. Well, there's nothing that increases our property values more than building more expensive houses next door. Uh, that, that raises our property values. Um, so I, I guess, 
you know, for just to be neighborly, I think we should, we should you know, let people build. But, but it's also in our, you know, think about your pocketbook. It, the more, if, if they're willing to pay twice as much in taxes, that, that's good for you. Um, so anyway, that's, I'm, I'm in opposition to this. Uh, I'll be voting against it, and uh, I guess you'll each vote as you think uh, is, is most appropriate. Mr. Tully, did you have your hand up? Joe Tully, Precinct 14. This has been awfully frustrating to sit back and listen to a lot of the, the comments and some of the rhetoric that have been uh, forthcoming. I, I think I'd like to make a couple observations. One is that many of the opponents of this article have sort of lumped this together with a whole bunch of other articles, and it's sort of it's trying to give the impression that there's an up and down, up or down vote to be had on all of these. And in fact, each of them are its own separate article and they should each be taken on their own merits. All we're discussing right now is Article 15. As I understand it, it's a, it's a very simple proposition. And when someone tells me something's confusing or maybe we should wait, let's give it more time, I mean, you know, these are all the same comments that people make when, when they simply don't have a better argument uh, to oppose something. People that have often vested interest in maintaining the status quo like to convince us that this is too confusing for us. We're not smart enough to understand it. And, it, you know, the, the, the fear mongering that goes on, maybe we should all just wait and step back and, and give it more time because the simple minded among us aren't capable of understanding it all. Uh, if, I'm, if I understand this correctly, you, you have a house, we'll call it A, and you can transform that house A into house B, and you need a special permit to do that. If you take house A and you want to knock it down and build house B, you do not need a special permit for that. It, it seems very clear to me that this is a loophole that's trying to be closed. It's a very simple proposition. It's not as difficult as some would try to have us believe. It, it really does seem to me as, as if it's a loophole in, in need of rectifying. If you can, if, if something requires a special permit, you shouldn't be able to do an end run around the existing regulations and, and give us that same thing uh, by virtue of a loophole. Now, I'm not going to try to nitpick all the other arguments that have been made in opposition to this article, but. Um, with respect to taxes, if, if so, new growth is exempt from Proposition 2.5. So if, if my neighbor tears down his house and builds a bigger house, that doesn't make my taxes go down, nor do, as I understand, 2.5, does it make the aggregate tax levy of the town go down because the new growth is exempt from 2.5. Um, there was one other comment I wanted to make, and unfortunately I can't read my own writing. All right, I, I will leave it at that. It, it, this is not as difficult as it seems, folks. Let's, let's give the folks that have done the, the heavy lifting and the hard work of, of trying to improve this pro Oh, I'm sorry, it was harmony. It was the issue of harmony. A, a, previous, a previous speaker spoke about the uh, nuances and the fact that we don't have a legal definition of harmony. That word already exists in, in the bylaw today. So again, to my point that this is not as confusing as some are trying to make it out to be. A lot of what is, what is being uh, commented on is, already exists under our existing rubric. And by the way, we don't have an unfettered right to build whatever we want on our property. So you know, despite the fact that at one point I thought Charlton Heston was going to walk in here and say we can have his home when we pry it from his cold dead hand, we, we, we already have restrictions on what we can do with our property. We already have zoning. What we're talking about is what's reasonable. And so when someone puts forth a, an article, and I'm not saying everybody has to agree, believe me. I'm, I'm for uh, spirited debate and disagreement. But what I object to is the, the sort of the painting of some of these folks uh, trying to sort of taint the, the, the proponents of this article as unwelcoming, uh, you know, exclusionary, 
uh, as far as I can tell, we're only talking about homes. We're not talking about keeping certain types of people out of town, whether uh, religious or sexual orientation or whatever it might be, color of their skin. We're talking about homes, folks. So when we talk about this being a welcoming town, and, and my neighbor Guillermo, who I uh, welcome to the, the neighborhood. I know it's been a while, but we, uh, you know, this is not personal, folks. We're talking about homes, and we're talking about what makes sense with respect to zoning. So if you, if, if you can have a, or, or I'm sorry, if you, can, if you need a permit to turn your house A into house B, it, it seems to me eminently reasonable that you should have the, have the same requirement to tear it down and then present the neighborhood with, with this same end result uh, of house B. It, it just, it, it's, not, it's not a hard concept, folks. Thank you, sir. Mr. McCabe, you're next. Everybody keeps raising their hand. You're all on the list. It's a long list. There's like 50 people on it. Mark McCabe, Precinct 2. I stand to terminate debate on Article 15 and all matters before it. Sorry. Motion to terminate debate on Article 15 and all matters before it. Uh, it's a two-third vote. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? That's an standing vote. I got what? No, it's a standing vote of the two thirds. So, um, Ms. Billifer, Mr. Fisher, Mr. O'Connor, and Mr. Schlickman will be our tellers. Everyone who wants to terminate the debate, please rise. They're going to count you. This is how we used to do it. Nine up, nine up front. Ten. Did you get um? Ten. Eleven up front. Who said thirty-seven? Mr. Fisher. Mr. O'Connor. Mr. Schlickman. 41. 41. All opposed, please rise. Mr. Schlickman. Nine. Nine. Mr. Greeley. Zero. Zero. Mr. O'Connor. Twelve. Twelve. Mr. Fisher. Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> Ms. Billifer. Ten. Ten. Hundred sixty two in the affirmative, forty two in the negative. It is vote is terminated. So we have a force the recommended vote of the ARB and we have a force Mr. Warden's substitute motion. First we'll vote on Mr. Warden's substitute motion. So if you want to substitute that, you'll vote yes. If that passes, then we will go on and take the main vote. If it fails, we'll vote on no action. So right Yes, sir. Yep. So that's why we're going to substitute Mr. Warden's if you want to do that. So all in favor of Mr. Warden's substitute, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. My opinion is not a, it, it is a negative vote. All right, five people have arisen. Same tellers. Everybody who wants to substitute, please rise.
Mr. Greeley. Three. Three up front. Seventeen in the left center. Mr. Schlickman. Twenty-one. Twenty-one in the left. Mr. Fisher. Eighteen. Eighteen. Thirty-three. Thirty-three. All opposed to the substitution, please rise. Eight. Eight up front. Mr. Schlickman. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight on the left. Thirty-three. Thirty-three in the left center. Mr. Fisher. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight right center. Ms. Pillifer. 17 on the right. It is a negative vote. 114 in the negative, 92 in the affirmative. The motion does not carry. We have now before us the recommended vote of the ARB. All in favor of no action, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? No. It is a affirmative vote for no action, and I so declare it. That ends Article 15. Ms. Um, Delano, as it looks like OTI's not coming, why don't you have your team walk down all the aisles and start collecting the clickers? If the members would pass them down to the kids in the buckets, may as well let them go home. So why don't you guys all start walking up down the aisles and collect the, pass them down as we go. We now have before us Article 16. We have recommended vote of no action and it looks like Ms. Pyle, you're ready to make a substitute. Again, my name is Elizabeth Pyle. Again, my name is Elizabeth Pyle. I'm town meeting member from Precinct 10. Disappointed about the way the last one went, but let's move on to the next one, which is completely different. I am asking you to vote yes tonight on the substitute motion for Article 16, which brings consistency to the regulation of residential building height in the zoning bylaw. Specifically, it eliminates a provision that has allowed houses on slope lots to be much taller than the 35 limit that applies to everybody else. From my viewpoint, both the last article and this article were about treating people fairly and consistently across the zoning districts. And I hope that you'll consider that when you vote tonight. This substitute language that you're being asked to vote on is not the same language that was in the warrant. It's a new definition that you should have received by email that was posted on the town website and that was placed on your chair Monday evening. So what you may have heard at previous meetings about changing the definition of building height does not apply to the language of this motion. It was what was on your chairs. The substitute motion for Article 16 will improve the definition of building height, which currently has the following problems and inconsistencies. First, for slope lots in the single and two family residential zoning districts, the R0, the R1, and the R2, height is currently measured from the average finished grade of the ground adjoining the building before construction occurs. But when the house is built, the ground is removed and often the grade of the lot is lower. This makes it difficult to verify that the new building height is calculated correctly because the original reference point on the ground is no longer in existence once the new house is built. In this situation, height can be easily manipulated by digging into the slope to gain additional height that would not be allowed if the average grade were determined after construction. In practice, the current situation has unfairly allowed houses that are much taller than 35 feet to be constructed on slope lots. The proposed amendment closes this loophole by measuring from the average finished grade after construction 
for all lots regardless of slope, which is a measurement that can easily be verified after the new house is built. Second, under the current bylaw, penthouses are not counted toward the definition of building height as they currently are under the bylaw. This amendment would make them count. It makes sense to count a penthouse in the height of a building. This is logical. It also implements a recommendation from the zoning board to the planning department last year to remove this exemption for penthouses from the definition of building height, which the Arlington Redevelopment Board did not act on. Now, some people have asked, how will this amendment affect existing houses? This amendment will have minimal effect on existing homes. It will not prevent people from adding a dormer or building an addition on their houses. Since the height limit of 35 feet is not changing, it won't affect anyone on a flat lot. For someone on a sloped lot, it won't have any effect if the lot is the same before and after construction. If someone has a house that is now greater than 35 feet tall and they want to expand the top floor outward, it won't have any effect if they are not increasing building height. This is a modest change, people. Um, buildings that are currently taller than 35 feet under the amended definition, which would mean if you have a non-conforming building, they would just stay as they are now. The amendment would not require a change to any existing building. Also, if someone has an unusual situation that is a hardship, they can always seek relief from the zoning board. In zoning, the unusual situation should not govern all the other homes. That's why we have zoning relief. Where this will have an effect is on slope lots where the grade is changed during construction to gain the measurements. Now, what are the reasons for making this change to the definition of building height, you may ask? First, the most important reason for the amendment is that houses which are more than 35 feet tall have greater impacts in terms of massing and scale on abutters. For some neighbors, it's like a gigantic wall has been built right up next to their houses. This goes against the settled expectations of neighboring homeowners who rightly expect house height to be limited to 35 feet tall, part of the zoning restrictions that we all buy into. Zoning protects these expectations of neighbors and abutters to be free from the impacts of construction that is too tall, too massive, and too out of scale with the surrounding neighborhood. Second, this proposed amendment helps to implement the, implement the recommendations in Arlington's master plan. In the master plan, residents were concerned about neighbor impacts of new large homes constructed in existing established residential neighborhoods. This proposed amendment furthers the recommendations of the master plan to modestly control the size of new construction. Third, the amendment uses a proven way of measuring building height by adopting Cambridge's approach. This is how Cambridge determines building height. It's not a new method, but one that has been used successfully by a neighboring municipality. Finally, the proposed amendment would also benefit everyone by providing a consistent way of measuring height across all zoning districts and without regard to lot slope. The proposed amendment will treat everyone equally by measuring their building height from the average grade around the finished building. This amendment will control massing and scale and it protects neighborhood character by regulating new construction that will be too tall and out of step with our neighborhoods. Thank you for your consideration and I urge you to vote yes on the substitute motion substituting for the recommended vote of the ARB on Article 16. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sayer. Mike Kerr, Precinct 12, and member of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, I wanted to rise to uh, explain that our vote uh, that was previously taken was done off of the old version of this, uh, that we had no ability to take a look at that. But I think that the reasoning that we had um, fits on this as well, uh, which is that Arlington is a, is a land of many hills and everything else. And um, with respect to how things are calculated, this once again is something that we need to uh, look at over uh, deliberately over the course of uh, the next year, hopefully, 
and try to figure out exactly how this would actually affect people. I think uh, there is definitely, when we looked at, once again, this is different language now, but I'm gonna say any of the height things that we looked at, the concern was is folks in the heights, on either end of the heights, uh, would be uh, severely affected by this. So, um, and we need to figure out exactly how that's going to happen uh, and what the ultimate results are gonna be. So uh, that's why we, uh, we went no action on uh, Article 16. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Kevin Greeley, Precinct 11. Again, I'd like to cede my time to resident Steve McKenna. Uh, as long as it's new stuff and not stuff he talked about last time. Okay, Steve? Yes, sir. Okay. Steve McKenna, Precinct well, he 13, last time. Upland Road. Um, with regard to Article 16, um, I propose that we vote in favor of what the ARB is saying is holding off on this. If you look at the current zoning bylaws, there is no definition for mean average grade. So therefore, how can we determine what the mean average grade is if the, there is no definition in the current zoning bylaws for that? With respect to that, the only other comment is this is the main reason. All of these piecemeals do not work well with the entire zoning bylaws as we have them now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You, sir. Green chair. Sorry, I don't name me. My name's Gary Tibbetts from Precinct 5, and I'd like to speak in opposition to this and the other zoning articles here, mainly because the board that we have, the professionals that deal with zoning, are telling us that these articles are not ready to be voted on. So they're very confusing. In the four years I've been here, I've never seen so many amendments and substitute motions as there are for these. Nobody's had time to read any of them. Every time they put a slide up, they tell you it's not exactly this. We have another one, but we don't have it with us. So for that reason, I think we should vote against it. For another, I've been getting you know, calls in my precinct. I had a young family call me. They told me that they had made several offers on houses over like a four or five year period trying to move to Arlington. And they kept getting outbid. They finally bought a smaller house and with their plan of you know, expanding it. It took them a while to get their finances straightened out, get a plan drawn, and they just recently went to get a building permit and they can't get it because of, of these you know, pending rules. And the guy's really disappointed. He's, you know, it's a mother and a father and two kids and they need a bigger house and they thought they could do it. Um, the other thing, the other problem I have with it is you know, everybody's inferring that these developers and real estate people are making a lot of money on this. And they probably are making a few bucks on it. Right, but these two family houses and stuff around me in East Arlington, when they're buying them and they're knocking them down, they were in tough shape to begin with. But the people that are making the most money on it are the families that owned them and paid taxes in Arlington for 50 or 60 years. And that's their nest egg. That's what, that's what people in their 70s and 80s and 90s are going to use to, you know, to finance the, the last part of their life. And you know, so they're the ones that are benefiting the most financially. And then the other people that are benefiting, especially by the duplexes, are the young families that can now afford to live in Arlington because the duplexes are a little cheaper than a single. So for those reasons, that's why I, I ask you to vote against this. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tibbetts. Mr. Kaplan? Bill Kaplan, Precinct 6. Uh, I, I'm, I'm torn on this one. Uh, I, I'm not in favor of gigantic buildings, um, but, you know, I'm not against, you know, buildings that conform to our codes. And, and I guess I see the issue here with the, the possible gaming of the system where, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe people are going to, like, unload dump trucks full of dirt to increase the average grade of their property or something. Uh, but I, I don't know how likely that is. Um, and I think, I think the intent originally is, is um, you know, it's, it, if, if the house can be this much 
this high based on what's there. Um, and that's that, that height, uh, whether you dig down or not or dump dirt on, doesn't really, I mean, the, the height of the house is going to be the same uh, if you actually are able to, to judge it by the original uh, grade, mean grade of the property. Um, so, so really, it's only if people do some crazy system gaming uh, that that's going to matter, whether it's before or after. And, and maybe people will do that. Uh, but I think, I think, yeah, this is still very rough. Um, I, I do think that a better, a better motion could be written and uh, probably by you know, the ARB, and that next year maybe we'll have a little tighter motion that we can vote on. And you know, I, I do think, yeah, you don't want skyscrapers going up next door, um, but I'm just not sure that this really is addressing the issue as well as it could be addressed. So I, I, I think I'm gonna be voting against this. Uh, I, I, I do think, I, I, I agree with some of what it's trying to do, I just, I just don't think it's the best solution. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jamison. Thank you, Mr. Moderator Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, prompted by Ms. Pyle's comment during her uh, presentation, um, when she said that the um, definition was completely different in their substitute from what was in the warrant, um, is this substitute within scope, Mr. Moderator? I believe it is. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, again, I would urge the, the body to um, not rush in to, again, we did it the original article um, was zoning 50 years and 50 years. Um, again, I would uh, ask the body to respect the, the advice from, with all due respect to the proponents being very um, passionate about what they're doing. Uh, let's, let's have them work with the ARB and everyone else and come up with a really solid set of things that, won't, uh, that will pass easily next year. Thank you. Sir, right behind Gwen. No, nope, right in front of Ms. Mamone. Alan Reedy, Precinct 16, and move to terminate debate on this article and all matters related thereto. Okay, a motion to terminate debate. It's been seconded. All in favor of terminating debate, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. Debate is terminated. We have before us a substitute motion of Ms. Pyle. We'll vote on that first. Majority vote. If that, depending upon the outcome of that, we'll make another vote. All in favor of Ms. Pyle's substitute motion, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. My opinion is a negative vote. We have before us a recommended vote of no action of the ARB. All in favor of no action of the ARB, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. My opinion is a vote of no action. That closes the debate on Article 16. That brings us to Article 17. Motion to adjourn. All in favor of adjourning, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? Okay, when we come back, we're going to take up Article 18. We've already disposed of 17. Um, thank you very much. We've well aired this issue. Thank you. Any motions for reconsideration? Any notices of reconsideration? No one has served any. That would be on the special and the town. All righty. We're done. Bye-bye.